Hello everyone, I'm Hannah with the Artmobile. Welcome back to our second virtual art class. Today we're going to be talking about op art and we're going to create your very own three-dimensional cube that has six different op art designs. So before we get started and get your supplies gathered, um, I want to give you a little bit of background about op art. So op art is short for optical art and the word optical describes how our eyes see things. In op art, artists use shape, color, and pattern to create the illusion of movement. Op art is usually made of simple geometric forms that then combine to create more complex forms. The movement began in the 1960s with the French artist Victor Vizarle, whose zebra painting was one of the first examples of op art. Another famous op art pioneer that you should know about is Bridget Riley. She is a British artist known for creating early op art paintings in the 60s, and she's still alive and creating artwork today. So to create your own 3D op art today, we have a template um, which basically allows you to cut out and fold up your design when you're done to create a three-dimensional cube. Um, but if you don't have access to a printer, you can easily recreate this by yourself just using a scrap piece of paper to measure out some squares. So let's go ahead and get started. Supplies that you'll need are piece of printer paper with the template or without, scissors, you'll need glue, a Sharpie marker, and a pencil. So go ahead right now and gather those supplies. So here is the cube template that you will use to create your own op art cube. If you do not have access to this printed version, you can very easily create your own by tracing six squares along your paper, adding tabs, and cutting them out. So I'll show you how to do that on the back side. An easy trick for creating a perfect square out of a scrap piece of paper is to find a rectangle. Now, if you're using a regular piece of paper, your rectangle should be about a little wider than the cap of a Sharpie. Um, but to create a perfect square, all you have to do is fold one corner and match it up perfectly along the edge, crease, and then use your scissors to trim off this excess. And when you open it up, you'll be left with a perfect square. So we're gonna use this little square template. It's slightly smaller than a standard post-it to create our own paper cube template. So in the middle of my page, I'm going to line up and trace this square with a pencil. And I'm basically going to create four squares all in a row. And it fits just perfectly. Once you have four squares like this, you're gonna add two more squares off to the side so you sort of get a sideways T shape. So you'll be left with a design something like this. Now we wanna add a few little tabs on the edges so that it's a lot easier to glue together in the end. So the tabs do not have to be a precise shape, but just do your best to add on something like this. And when you cut, these will make it a lot easier to glue at the end. Once you have created your template, you can simply cut out along the outside. These inside lines are going to be where you fold, so do not cut those, just cut the very outline. So once you have cut out your cube template, um, we can go ahead and get started with your designs. We're gonna be creating six different designs, one in each square, and it doesn't matter where you start. 
I would suggest because this paper is pretty thin, if you're using a Sharpie marker for your design, you might want to place a scrap piece of paper underneath so that it doesn't bleed through. The very first design that we're going to create is this one. Basically, it's going to look like uh, several tubes running along your page. So choose one square to start, and you're just going to draw four curvy lines going up and down. Your next step is to draw some stripes on each curve. The first row is going to have stripes that are curving upward like a smiley face. Your next row is going to have stripes that are curving the opposite way, so downward like a frowny face. Then your next row will be the opposite again, upward. And because we're going to be filling in each stripe with a Sharpie marker, you want to keep them about the width of a pencil so that it's not too tiny. Last row will go the opposite direction. Your stripes don't have to match up, but if they do, that'll work well in the next step, which is to add Sharpie marker to fill in every other stripe. Today we're gonna to be creating three designs that will require you to fill in a large space and three designs that are just simply uh, line designs. I'll be creating mine with a black Sharpie marker, but if you would like to add color, you could do that as well. Once you're finished with your first design, feel free to erase any extra pencil marks and choose a new square to start our second design. This one will be very similar. Um, you will need to start off by choosing one point as your center focal point somewhere in your square. It can be in the middle or off to the side. After that, you're going to draw eight lines coming from the focal point, sort of like you're drawing two X's. Once you have your eight lines, you're gonna do the same thing and you're going to draw curved stripes inside each little wedge. The key is that your curve should be going opposite directions. If you'd like to draw arrows for yourself with pencil first, you can do that. Fill one wedge with stripes, then fill the next wedge with stripes going the opposite direction. Once you have finished your design, it will look sort of like a spider web. The next thing we're going to do is fill this one in with Sharpie the same way we did, we did the last one by coloring in every other stripe. But one little trick for this one is if you want it to look a little bit more 3D, you should leave a white highlight in the middle of each black stripe. If you were to do any other shading and you were to add shadows around the outside, that would help add to the 3D effect. But with a marker, we can achieve that same effect just by leaving one area white. So go ahead and pick one wedge to start with and color in every other stripe, trying to remember to leave a little white highlight in the middle. Once you finish one stripe, you will go ahead and do the other wedges. And again, keep in mind that you wanna work opposite so you create sort of a checkerboard effect.
Once you are finished with this cube, you can do the same thing, erase any pencil marks, and we'll go ahead and start on the next design. Choose a new square, and this one's gonna be a little bit simpler. All you have to do is draw one straight line across the middle. Then on the top, in the center, you're gonna put one dot and try to make it as perfectly even in the middle as you can. Along the bottom, we're gonna draw some stripes. Because it's a small space, try your best to make them straight, but again, it does not have to be perfect. And once again, you want your stripes to be about the width of your pencil. Once you have drawn all your lines along the bottom, you're gonna connect the top part of the lines to your dot. This is sort of a perspective drawing trick, and it's gonna make the lines look as if they're disappearing into space. Once you have your design, you can go ahead and fill in the outside with your Sharpie marker and color basically every other stripe. So if you did this design correctly, it should look as if these lines are going straight and then they reach an edge where they curve off into the distance. Your next design is going to look something like this. Choose a new square and divide it into four parts with your pencil. Once you've divided, you're gonna place one dot in the outside corner of each square. Try not to go all the way to the edge, but it shouldn't be perfectly centered either. The next step you can use your Sharpie marker for. Go ahead and draw anywhere from eight to 10 lines spreading outward from the original dot. Something like this. In your next box, you're gonna do the same thing. However, when you meet the edge where the previous lines are, you wanna make sure that they connect. So I'm going to start here and connect them back to my next dot. So I get something like this. The fourth box, I'll do the same, Be sure, being sure that I connect these dots. So I get something like this. Now in the last box, I have to make sure that I connect to the other two boxes that it's touching. So starting with my dot, I will move outward and connect. So that's all that's required for this design. Your last step is to erase your pencil marks. And if you wanted to, I think this one would look awesome with some added color if you have supplies available. We're gonna do a similar line pattern for our next square. Choose a new box, and this time you can use your Sharpie marker the entire time. You won't have to erase any of the lines at the end. The design we're creating is this one. It has a lot of lines, but it's actually pretty simple to replicate. The first thing you're going to do is divide your cube into four sections. So divide in half, then in half again, and that half in half. Then you're going to do the same thing the other direction. Do your best to eyeball it. If these are not perfect, it will still turn out okay. The next thing we're going to do is create four different diamonds. So using this first box, we're going to connect corner to corner. So that it looks like this. There's our first diamond. Our second diamond will be using the next four boxes. Then we'll do the same thing two more times. A 
Once you have your basic grid pattern, you're gonna fill in the inside of your diamonds with more lines. It's important that you always make sure they touch at the top, spread out in the middle, and then touch again at the bottom. So start with something like this. One, two, and I'm gonna draw from the bottom lines that connect just like I did last time. So there's your first diamond. You're going to recreate the same thing in the next three. Once you have filled in your four diamonds, you're also going to fill in the space around them. Do the exact same thing in the very center diamond. and do the same thing in the spaces around the outside, even though these won't complete a full diamond. When you're finished, you have a pattern that should look something like this. We have one last design to complete, and this one is going to end up looking sort of like a knot. So once again, you can do this entirely with your Sharpie marker. There will not be any lines you need to erase at the end. The very first step is to divide your box into four sections by drawing a line from corner to corner, sort of like a giant X in the middle of your box. As we draw this design, you're going to have to rotate your page, and it's very important to pay attention to whether or not you're drawing on the right side of the line or the left side of your line. We're going to start off by drawing on the right side like this. Draw a small curve and then straight down on the right side of your line. On the inside, you can fill it in with two more smaller lines. Again, always be sure that they start off in that corner and spread outward, just like our last design. Then go ahead and rotate, and you're going to draw again on the right side of your line, drawing a curve that comes straight down. Then fill in with two more. Complete this all the way around the four sides of your cube. you'll be left with sort of a pinwheel design. This time we're gonna do another layer, but you're going to draw on the left side of the line. It's the exact same shape, a curve then straight down with two lines inside. Continue to rotate your paper so that you get this second half drawn on all four sides. Now, if you wanted to, you could continue this knot pattern over and over by just continuing to add on the right side and then on the left side. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm gonna leave mine as it is. I think it turned out pretty well. Your final step for this project is to uh, construct your cube. So basically what you need to do is, first of all, fold under all of these tabs that you created at the beginning. So once you've folded all your tabs under, you also need to fold each of your individual squares. By now, you should be able to see how this is going to form a cube. You want to take the long end of your cube and attach those sides first. For this project, you can use either a glue stick or liquid glue and it will take a little bit for it to dry, but once it is, it'll be very secure. So go ahead and add just a dab of glue, or if you're using a glue stick, just do a quick pass on the tab on the long edge, and you're gonna attach that first. You can see that our cube is starting to take form. The last thing to do is to glue on the top 
tabs and on the bottom tabs of your cube. Be sure that you let your glue dry once you're finished, but then you will have your very own 3D op art cube. We hope you enjoyed today's project and we would love to see what you've created. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at CBUS Artmobile, so please tag us in your finished work. Thanks for joining us today and we look forward to our next project.